Google launched the Pixel 3 October of last year, and since then, it's been one of the best phones available. I made it my daily Android driver, and I've learned a lot of things that weren't so obvious the first time I handled the phone. So here are the key takeaways I've learned since. First, the camera. Y'all knew I was gonna talk about this. I'm still so in love with Pixel 3's camera. When I use it every day, I kind of forget about the quality when I'm out taking pictures of my friends or my food or animals or pets and dogs that I see on the street. I just take a photo and then I don't really think about the quality. But when I'm in a really hard situation like a really dark bar or I'm in a moving vehicle and I take a photo and it turns out effortlessly great, it, I'm just reminded every once in a while how great this camera is, especially night sight. Night sight, I don't think I'll ever go back to flash again. You just take a photo and it could be completely almost dark. Okay, not completely dark, don't quote me on that, but the photo will turn out great and clear and I just am really impressed by the camera. Next up is call quality issues. I personally haven't experienced this, but there are enough reports online on Reddit and on Google forums that I'd be kind of remiss not to talk about this. Users reported things like echoing and really tinny audio and voices kind of delaying and then stacking up on each other, which is really, really annoying. Google hasn't released a reliable fix on this. And these are kind of the issues that only come to light months after a launch. I remember the first Pixel had issues with its microphone back in 2017, and I guess it just hasn't hit critical mass yet that Google has released a, an official fix, and it's really annoying. So my advice is that the moment there's any issues with your microphone or your call quality, you just need, you need a file complaint return it, get a replacement as soon as possible, and know that you are not alone in this situation. One issue that I have been experiencing personally is that mic will flash a really white, bright light for one second before I unlock it, and it's really jarring. And I had some fix, I read online that there were some fixes, and that includes turning the ambient display off. And for a while, that worked for me, but then every once in a while, it does pop up again. And it does worry me that it will just get worse. Apparently, Google is issuing a fix for this, this April, and I haven't downloaded it yet, but I'm kind of hopeful it works because the ambient display, turning that off, worked for a little bit. And so um, a lot of other people have been experiencing this and saying that it's been fixed, so I'm hopeful myself. So switching to something I do like is call screen. I use call screen, unfortunately, way too much. That's because I get a lot of spam calls. I get it three or four times a week, a day sometimes. And it's a really big modern day problem that affects a lot of people. Verizon released an app to try to combat robocalling and the FCC is trying to sue and fine these companies that do these robocalling calls. And for me, there's just something really satisfying to uh, turn on call screen, see the spammers call, and see the text read out, and then either hang up or see them hang up on me. There's something really satisfying about that. And it's just something that I use a lot. One thing that I don't see myself using that's related to that is um, Google Duplex's reservation system for Assistant, which enables Assistant to make reservations on your behalf. And I just don't see myself using that. One, I think it's a little creepy to have a robot you know, call this other human person who may not be expecting it. And also, like, I like calling um, other humans, making sure that they got my date and time and reservation correctly, so yeah. One thing that is on the Pixel and available on other Android phones is digital well-being. Digital well-being is a software feature that is supposed to limit user time on the phone and certain apps, and I use it a lot. It's really eye-opening for me. I like to not look at screens after work, especially from looking at screens all day. And so digital well-being helps me set those kinds of boundaries. On average, I spend about two hours a day looking at my phone, which is, which is good, not great. It's below the national average of three hours, but I always feel like I could do better. And on the weekends when I look and I see that I only spend like 30 or 45 minutes looking at my phone, I feel really accomplished. 
And I also limit myself with certain apps like Instagram makes me feel super self-conscious after scrolling after a while. So I've limited myself for 15 minutes and it's actually felt really great that I could, when I see that little timer go up or the notification go up saying, you know, you have five minutes left or we're going to like turn this app off. It's nice to set the phone down and be like, okay, I can go outside now or something. So it's been really good. So there you have it, Pixel 3, six months in. I still super love the phone and we're looking forward to what Google has next. Obviously there's the Pixel 4 and the 4 XL, but there's a rumored Pixel 3 Lite that might come out earlier this year. And it's just basically going to be a cheaper Pixel 4 with maybe the Pixel 3's camera. And I'm excited. It means it's more affordable for people and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing that, maybe, who knows.